Welcome back to 13C. Today we're taking a look at the T-Series holster from Blackhawk. This particular model we have in is the L3D light bearing, uh, L3D level three duty, which means it does have that added retention feature on here of the back strap. Um, as this video is dropping, I believe they are just now finally introduced some models uh, that will accommodate a red dot on the front here, which is nice to see. Uh, this current model though is long enough to hold a threaded barrel on the end here. It will take the thread protector as well. Uh, I've misplaced the thread protector, so I can't put it back on here right now. And we've been doing some suppressor shooting uh, for the light actually, doing some night shooting with that. So that's why I still have this threaded barrel in here, because honestly I don't feel like changing it back out. This is one of our suppressor hosts uh, that we use here. so. Plus, like I said, I don't know where the thread protector is or the other barrel for it, so it is what it is, right? <laughs> These lone wolf barrels are pretty good replacements, though. So if you want more, in if you're interested in, uh, in the light itself, uh, the video before this dropped, so check that out. Uh, the TLR1 HL, you probably know everything you probably need to know about it, but if you want to get our take on it and our thought on it versus some other lower priced lights, feel free to check out that other video. Go through the light a little bit, but we also focus on some commentary where we talk about some of the differences. Anyway, we're getting off in the weeds. If you want to check that out, go ahead focus in on the holster here. I've got it off the belt right now because I would rather um, hold it like this than try and swing my hip around and gyrate all weird to try and show you this. It's just easier like this. Geese pause. So here on the Hacienda, the chickens don't come home to roost. It's the geese that come home in the evening, and it is getting later in the evening right now. It's actually incredibly cool out here, surprisingly, for a June evening, but that's why we've got this hoodie on here uh, from 1776 United. Anyway, this is the holster. This is the Glock 17 that's in here. One of my favorites, actually. Check out those fish gills on here, as they are called, the RTF2 finish. One of my favorite Glocks, to be quite honest with you. Uh, in any case, this holster is for the, this version is for the Glock 17, 19. It will also fit 22, 23, 31, 32, 45, and 47. Um, what we're talking about here for this specific light bearing model, if you're looking at the level two, there's a little bit of difference, so check those out. But for the three with this light on here, uh, the way it locks up and the way it holsters up, that's where we are. There is retention here without the hood up, um, and it is rated for the pull test, so if you do forget to put the hood down, uh, and you, you know, you, law enforcement, you're cuffing somebody up, you holster it up, and you forget to throw that hood back, it still has your main retention feature in there, your primary retention feature. So uh, while you don't have the hood up, you still have that primary retention feature, so it's not just gonna fall out or get yanked out. Uh, it's gonna have to be, obviously, the deliberate release to get it to release and come back out of the holster the next time. Uh, flip the hood forward is just that easy. Um, it comes with the jacket on here, the jacket sleeve as standard. You can order the standard, uh, just regular belt slide if you want to replace this. Uh, all the hardware and everything on here is duty rated and pull test yank, torque tested, however you want to call it. Uh, for duty use and law enforcement use, which is nice. This is a solid beefy holster um, It's not too big, but it is a nice looking holster. It looks good um, And it functions as far as everything that we've seen very well. This is probably Blackhawk's nicest holster to date uh, So kudos to them for their update and upgrade on this from uh, let's say the previous Serpa So we've got some other features on here that are important to mention uh, the holster comes with the jacket slot on here so you see you've got that extra room to drop your jacket in there. Um, you can order a separate uh, belt slide sleeve for this. Uh, all the hardware and everything on here is duty rated. Um, so all the pull yank tests, all that stuff are conducted with both of those. So if you want to change this out, you can order that separate piece. Um, I kind of like the idea of the extra jacket loop on here. Uh, it's nice that it ships that way because for the most part, we're in a duty holster, especially, you know, regardless of whether it's winter, rain, whatever, probably don't want to don't want to not have that option uh, so that you can get your firearm a little more easily. Uh, some of the other features to talk about, it has a hydrophobic lining, hydrophobic sound dampening lining. How about that? Um, so the idea is uh, it'll shed water out of the inside, not prevent, you know, or encourage moisture buildup and stuff like that inside the holster, which is good for your gun. The other side of it is the sound dampening side. So when you go to activate this uh, or deactivate the retention, so to speak, you can listen to the hood drop and then you draw it out. So 
from a sound dampening st standpoint, we're, I'll do this quietly, but I'm gonna drop the, when I drop the hood, I'm gonna have my hand in front of it so it goes forward and you can hear it release from there. So you can draw this uh, quite quietly and if you've got your hand, you know, let's say you've got it holstered up here, you put your hand in front of it, let it, let your, let the front one drop with your hand and then draw. You can do that fairly quietly um, if you want to draw in a more stealthy or co covert fashion. Uh, theoretically, that is definitely accomplishable with this. There's not a lot of drag on that, so that's nice to see. Just obviously make sure you know, you're know you thinking it out when you go to drop that hood that as soon as you go to disengage, the first thing that's gonna happen, that hood's falling. So there you go. From a anti-grab standpoint, there's a couple of good there's a couple of good features on here that prevent someone from you know if it's on your hip just kind of yanking up behind you and trying to grab it the way this thing is designed. Um, it's I don't want to get too many of these features on video because I'm always hesitant for stuff like that. This for our uh, you know for for our friends in law enforcement or security or military or whoever else is going to be in there. I don't want to put out an educational video on these things. At the same time, I want to try and instruct you on how this is used. So getting a good grip on here, uh, a good high grip on the handgun, you can tell you can get way up there uh, in the tang just like you're supposed to for a good grip. Uh, I believe Blackhawk uses the term master grip principle. A lot of people have different things. Basically, you're just trying to get, get your hand as high up on the back of that gun as you can to help uh, uh, manage recoil and get your gun back on target faster in between shots. That's why it's so important to be up there. In any event, um, that allows for that. Uh, the one thing I will say on this that I have run in run into issue is, is that when you're drawing with this as you pull it out, I find my thumb rides perf kind of perfectly right on there for what some people would be. For me, when I draw and my hands come together, my hands coming up a little higher on this so when I so when I'm pressing out I'm kind of a little bit at times raising that back thumb up higher than it is as I come in and as I press out so um, there's that um, at the same time probably from I mean my thumbs ride a little bit higher than some people and depending on your grip and stuff like that it'll depend I like my thumbs nice and high on the side my thumb is actually kind of engaging the side of the slide here a little bit no it doesn't slow the slide down speed down enough it's not like I'm torquing on it with my thumb my my, my fingers here are the ones that are providing the grip my thumbs are just kind of floating here if you will uh, for that regard and everybody's different in their draw what what they like what they don't like whatever I just thought I'd point that out as far as someone who likes a high high and loose thumbs let's say uh, coming out of this you've as your hand comes in it's, it's a little bit of a difference there uh, but it's enough to worth noting but nothing that's become an issue um, and you can see some of the videos we've draw, done and stuff like that as far as drawing on this you want to come in and get that good grip you you're gonna want to practice just like with any holster you're gonna want to practice it's important to practice with this one um, one of the things that, uh, since I'm not used to dealing with a level three retention holster, uh, <clears throat> you know, as I come and grab, let's say, you know, the handgun sitting here, I will jam my hand kind of up and in so I get that high grip. When you're doing that, um, you almost more want to come straight down as opposed to slightly coming in and forward a little bit. And it's not like there's much that happens there, but it's just that little bit of a difference that your anti-grab retention features uh, on here uh, to prevent someone from or at least make it harder for someone as they're coming up from behind you to grab your gun from behind you've got to clear those with your thumb again I don't want to be too specific on here but in any event you're not sliding your thumb from back to front if you miss and you're not sliding from front to back either uh, if you miss quote unquote and of course if you come in hard and down on this uh, anti-grab device here in the back which is what I'm calling it. I'm not sure what the technical term is but if you're coming down in fast and hard on that your thumbs gonna feel it so something to keep in mind I haven't necessarily seen that as a major issue I think the the functionality there needs to be there for that because you need to uh, stop people from uh, you know if somebody's trying to grab your gun that's the whole point of a level three retention is to make sure you retain your firearm so these things are built in there and there's some forethought into that and I appreciate that I also like the fact of this where this uh, cut is in the back here and how it's made out that if somebody does try and grab it from the back you drop your arm down on that their hand and thumb are gonna be stuck on there beautifully and it's gonna catch them pretty well so 
I do like that. Uh, anyway, hopefully that goes into some of the retention features enough that if you're used to dealing with holsters that are similar to this, you know exactly what I just talked about. Hopefully that, yeah, I'm not giving away more than that. I know there's videos out there that theoretically talk more about it, but that's not what this one's going to be about. Um, otherwise, I think this thing is well made. I think kudos to Blackhawk. They've done a great job uh, on this design. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best holster design that Blackhawk has come out with yet. So good job to them. I also like the fact this thing is made in the USA. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not sourced from overseas, which is really nice to see. Um, anytime we can get US made products, uh, I definitely prefer those, especially, you know, is what it is, right? I mean, especially with everything that we're going through now, any US manufacturing job, jobs that we can have and we can keep is a huge benefit. So we've done some kind of low key testing on the retention features here, uh, trying to see if we can get it out of the holster without disengaging those retention features, both with the hood up and with the hood forward, just relying on the primary mechanism in here. I honestly consider the hood to be a secondary mechanism. Um, in any event, we have not been able to get it out. Now at the same time, we have not like gone total ham on this thing, trying to really break it trying to get this thing out of here but i am so far impressed with what i'm seeing uh, it is worth noting we have not done any uh, really dirty nasty environments trying to cake up the mechanism or anything like that uh seeing how it handles that so keep that in mind uh this has been for the most part uh testing and everything has been done here on the you know quote unquote sterile range at this point one last thing i almost forgot if you're getting this holster in the light bearing configuration keep in mind you are going to have to keep the light on here to use this holster so uh, you cannot use this holster without the light it is the gun will technically fit in there but it will not lock in another retention features will work and it will be loose in there so if you're gonna get the holster with the light bearing option uh, you're gonna be forced to use the light on your gun at all times with this holster if you're getting light bearing don't get the light bearing then obviously it's not an issue but you can't use the light so there you go uh, this is uh, high enough on here uh, for suppressor height sight, so um, so that's good news. They're cut high enough definitely for your high suppressor height sights, so uh, no problem there. And of course, we'll put in a picture here, whatever, of uh, Glock 19 in here. We don't have some of the other Glocks. Honestly, for me, all of our Glocks are 17s or 19s. I find no real use for any other Glock. They got it right with that, and uh, you know, moving forward, any other guns, you know, like a G43, right? Why not get a shield? Shield came out first. It's a better gun. Shh. If you have any questions on this, feel free to leave them down below. YouTube comments, a notification for us on the creator side suck. So um, especially if you're coming into this video a couple weeks from now, uh, where it's gonna drop out, of the, drop out of our feed as far as comments that we're seeing come up because of new videos that hit and obviously the, the bigger videos in the past that are gaining a huge amount of traffic. It's really weird right now on the channel. We've got videos that are two, three years old that are turning out thousands of views uh, thousands thousands of views a week and some of our newer content is just being absolutely shadow banned and destroyed by YouTube so we'll see how this video does um, out of the gate in any event it's a long way of saying that if you're asking a specific comment on this uh, and you don't see a response in a day or two head over to Facebook check out the corresponding post that we'll make on this leave your comments there even if it's an older post Facebook notifications as much as I hate Facebook and the Zuck their notifications at least come through on a creator standpoint very well and it's really I'd say it's hard to miss those, but it's much more difficult to miss those uh, from a creator standpoint, especially considering the fact that on our Facebook page, we've only got like 4,000 followers or something like that. So it's not like there's a ton of notifications that we're getting into the post here on YouTube, you know, where there's tens of thousands of views a week. So any event, um, that's where we are with that. Uh, leave those comments down below, Facebook. Uh, we're also on Instagram. Uh, we do a lot of posting over there, behind the scenes stuff that doesn't get on Facebook, you know, pictures and whatnot. So if you're interested in that, seeing things that are coming up, you can also leave feedback as to questions that you have moving forward also. Thanks again, everybody. We really appreciate your support. We've got a Patreon page. If you're interested, uh, you check out our swag shop, uh, unique patches, stuff like that. You won't find anywhere else. Also, 1776 United, we've got a subscriber code for them, 15% off pretty much everything on their site, including our T-shirts, uh, our channel shirts, which are cool. They're the uh, only uh, supplier of our channel shirts. So thank you. Somebody popped up on Etsy, apparently, or one of these sites. Uh, uh, not Etsy. I don't know what it was. Try, trying to sell something 13C, which is kind of weird. Anyway, we got that next. In any event, thanks again, everybody. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your support. And uh, everybody stay safe out there. And uh, good job, Blackhawk.
One of the things I've been working on is actually a little bit of speed in my presentation out of this level three holster. Uh, for those of you who are familiar uh, with me, I generally carry always concealed, and uh, usually there's not an additional uh, retention feature other than the passive that's built into whatever holster that I'm carrying. So uh, open carry, you would want some sort of retention, generally speaking. Obviously, uh, this is a duty holster, so you want not a really good retention system, which this one seems to have. As we go through this process, I'm going to continue to try and speed up while at the same time not sacrificing technique. We're going to bring you along for that ride right now. So 131. One three five, and that was really sloppy. One three four, again, screwed up the draw on that one. I'm telling you, when you're drawing, and I don't want to get too much into how this, how your draw works on here. I'm still considering whether I want to put that information out there or not. Uh, but you have to be very specific in your grab. Uh, we're just going to say that. Um, if you get a proper grip on your handgun, no issues whatsoever. But if you're coming in just slightly off, a lot of times with my uh, old holster, a lot of times, especially when I was going for speed, I come in a little bit from the back and move forward, pushing my web of my hand directly up against the back of the handgun, getting as high a grip as possible. And part of the technique that I've built in there uh, is not accounting for some of the safety features that prevent this gun from, or make it much more difficult to be able to snatch this gun out of the holster. If someone reaches up, let's say from behind you to grab it and try and engage and disengage uh, your retention features, uh, there are features in there that make it difficult to do that. And that it is interfering with part of my normal draw stroke that I've got thousands of repetitions in so tens a ton of repetitions in anyway um anyway let's let's get back to it that was a 138 so that was a 187 on the on the second shot since i dropped the first one That was much smoother. That was a 117. That was a 126. And a 122 on that one. That one felt really, that one felt really good. But I mean, I'm sure you guys believe me, whatever, but whatever um man i am slow today and that's considering this is from retention i'm not that upset that was a 121 128 A 121. Ooh, 158. All right, so I'm testing out these gloves here. And, um, caught me sleeping on that one. These are the uh, Fury gloves from Blackhawk. Uh, I forget which model I'll have to, I'll put, the, I'll put a link down below as to which Fury model these are. Uh, seem to be decent gloves. Uh, one of the features with this is um, I wanted to try and actually use these gloves uh, along with the holster and try and put this whole thing together. If, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, this is a duty holster. A lot of duty happens in the winter. You're wearing gloves of some sort. I'm trying to at least accommodate some of that at the same time here. You know, it is what it is, right? All right, let's let's get one more before we call it for today because it's going to rain any minute here. That was a 138. That was awful. Let's. So one. 
35. Let's do one more for good luck. Second hit on that was 161. And a 1.20 flat. I'm gonna leave it at 1.2. Let's get the camera gear in before it actually does rain.